Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the third day of the third annual Chicago Quantum Summit. We've had a busy few days, and today is our final day of the summit, where we're going to be focusing on the challenges and opportunities of building a quantum economy and focusing also here on building the economy in the state of Illinois. So it gives me great pleasure to launch today's session by introducing Dana Friedman, a professor of chemistry at Northwestern University, who's going to be moderating the session. And Dana, please, let's go ahead and get started. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, David. It is my um, pleasure to introduce our first speaker today, uh, Penny Pritzker, founder and chairman of uh, PSP Partners, Pritzker Realty Group, PSP Capital, and PSP Growth, and the former U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Um, Penny uh, Pritzker, we are looking forward to your talk on, um, on the quantum economy. Thank you. Dana, thank you very much, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's, I'm really pleased to be here with you, and thank you for being here today. I want to thank you, uh, also thank the Chicago Quantum Exchange for hosting this wonderful event. All of us here know two things for sure. First, the potential of quantum tech is transformational. And second, that the long-term benefit of quantum information science is only possible when people across academia, industry, and government work together. So make no mistake, the quantum race is too complex and too important to win without a collaborative regional effort. So thank you for joining us because it's only together that we can harness the collective power of what's already happening with quantum in the Chicagoland area and capitalize on this momentum to make Chicago a global quantum hum, hub for the long term. The race to develop functional quantum computers, networks, and sensors has many challenges, and yet it provides a huge opportunity for our country, for all of us. Just as the space race did, quantum properties of matter are poised to revolutionize our world. It will change the way we compute and send information forever. For example, quantum computing could help us find new drugs, chemicals, and materials, solving complex modeling problems in just days. And our current computers, ones that our current computers could not solve in a natural lifetime. Quantum networks could transmit sensitive financial and government information in a way that is virtually unhackable. Or new quantum sensors could enable submarines to navigate submerged for months and enable radar to find stealth aircraft. These innovations will open opportunities we have never dreamed possible. The market for quantum computing alone is projected to reach almost $1 trillion over the next 20 years, according to the Boston Consulting Group. As a result, the space has attracted $500 million in venture investing in 2020 alone, double what that amount was in 2019. Companies ranging from Volkswagen to Goldman Sachs to Walmart are beginning to experiment. While the economic potential of quantum computing is mind blowing, this is an existential endeavor. Like the mandate we had during the space race, this time we are racing against multiple countries, including China, to become the world leader in quantum. This time, as like the last, there is so much at stake. In 1957, the Russians lost, launched Sputnik 1 and Sputnik 2 into space. Its orbit ushered a national reckoning that overhauled our education system, our research funding mechanisms, and most importantly, the will to reach the moon within a decade. We have known since 1994 that a quantum computer could break the RSA encryption scheme that underlies our cybersecurity. But it wasn't until 2016 when the Chinese launched Macias, the first quantum enabled satellite 
that the stakes of not winning a quantum race became real. Just listen to the quote from Jin Wei Pan, China's father of quantum. He said, we were only the follower and the learner at the birth of modern information science. Now we have a chance to be a leader. He laid down the gauntlet. In response in 2018, the US Department of the Army issued a request for solutions to identify and evaluate the current state of quantum technology applications. The request stated, a global race has ensued to exploit and operationalize quantum technologies for the use of military effects. The race to conquer the quantum domain is among the most fiercely competitive in today's world of technology. To meet this challenge requires public investment and private sector cooperation and investment. The US government has made a strong start in the 2018 National Quantum Initiative. In 2018, after posing quantum inf information sciences as one of the grand challenges for the United States future, the US government resolved to no longer be a follower and introduced the $1.2 billion Quantum Initiative, a set of initiatives coordinated between the National Science Foundation, the Department of Energy, and the National Institute of Standards and Technology at the US Department of Commerce. This was an important public investment. And we all know that private industry depends on this type of public investment. But the reality is, we are at a 50 year low in funding for early stage government R&D. Like the space program, we must make sure that our academic centers, the government and private industry are working together to ensure that we meet this national security threat and this economic opportunity. The stakes are high and we must take the endeavor seriously if we are to maintain America's position at the forefront of this innovation. When this process works right, the government sets the priorities and funds the basic research that, get a, that gets applied to the government's goals and, and, I'll say and importantly, applied to new technology services and tools for American business. To quote MIT, professors Jonathan Gruber and Simon Johnson. The private sector is not enough to sustain prosperity. Only the public sector will take a shot at reaching the moon or matching, mapping the human genome or creating dramatically cleaner sources of energy. Today with this challenge, we should be doing more. Around the time the space race started, we were investing 2% of our annual GDP in publicly funded research. Today, we're at a 60 year low of 0.7% of GDP. History tells us that publicly funded research can lead to serendipitous innovation. For example, the space race yielded plenty of non-space benefits. The camera phone, light emitting diodes, home insulation, landmine removal, memory foam, wireless headsets, the ear thermometer, and many others too numerous to name. Like the space race, we know that in pursuit of quantum computing, private industry will benefit from new innovations. So while we do not know what the quantum computer of the future looks like, we do know the journey will be enriching with a multitude of new technologies in photonics, lasers, superconducting materials, and other advances. I believe that Illinois is well poised to usher in the quantum future. Illinois is the recipient of one of the National Science Foundation's Quantum Leap Centers at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And two, Yes, two of the Department of Energy Centers of Excellence led by Fermilab and Argonne National Laboratories. This means 
that Illinois institutions have leading national quantum initiative sponsored research projects totaling approximately $250 million over the next five years, which is one fifth of the total national quantum initiative investment on the part of the federal government. Because of Illinois' industrial and manufacturing roots and its emerging innovation profile, we have all the necessary attributes to apply quantum information science to the problems of American business and American healthcare and so much more. As the home of several 500, Fortune 500 companies and three Dow 30 companies, including aerospace giant Boeing, and as a manufacturing center, Illinois has the capabilities to develop prototypes and components, as well as scale up new materials and devices to build coming generations of quantum sensors, computers, and machinery for the quantum internet. Illinois' industry base can also be useful as corporate America experiments with quantum information science. Federal investment in Illinois R&D will also lead to new jobs, which is good for Illinois workers. At the same time, economists note that the entire U.S. will benefit as the innovation economy is nurtured in places like Illinois. Today, with its share of innovation economy and its STEM workforce, Chicago is poised to become what Brookings calls a growth center with a high-tech innovation sector that produces significant technology gains and wealth. Our role in the quantum information science revolution can and should help Illinois fulfill this bright promise of further discovery and innovation leadership. But we have to invest in order to make this promise a reality. We have to invest in our people for one, What's key to Chicago's leadership in quantum is our strongest asset, our people. Our world-class universities and labs produce incredible talent that can make us a national and global leader in quantum computing. For example, the University of Illinois at, Chirpan, at Urbana-Champaign is ranked nationally as top five computer science and a top 10 in engineering and physics. The University of Chicago with the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering is ranked a top 10 physics department. And Northwestern University has a top 10 nationally ranked chemistry department. With this powerful engine for talent, Argonne and Fermilab can train the next quantum information science workforce. But, what we need to do is to develop curriculum that draws on material science, chemistry, physics, computer sciences, engineering, and mathematics to meet the growing demands of this new sector and industry. At the same time, we must make sure that no one is left behind. We need to include not just a diversity of disciplines, but also a diversity of people to ensure our quantum information science ecosystem looks like Illinois. This means that we must collaborate with our universities to develop a diverse workforce, one that truly reflects our region's population. And we can't wait until our students get to university to start this process. The reality is we can start earlier. According to an IBM industry panel, high school students are not being prepared for the quantum information science curriculum they will encounter at the university level. This is not surprising. Although computing jobs are the number one source of new jobs in the United States, only 45% of high schools offer a computer science course. I just can't believe that. And in low income and minority schools, this percentage is even lower. We must do better. I'll end my remarks today with a call to action, a call to action for each of you. Put simply, we need better collaboration and we need more investment. 
First, let me talk about the importance of collaboration. Our universities must work closely with one another and with our industries. Our universities must partner more closely with our universities. Our industries must partner more closely with our universities to identify viable commercial opportunities. We are asking companies to take a risk and work with academia earlier than they're normally comfortable. This is good for our scientists because to move the science forward, we need use cases and applications, and these come from industry. But it's also good for our companies. Change happens fast. Once quantum computing becomes applicable, it's going to be hard to buy your way in. We recognize the need for improved cross-sector collaboration when Kelly Welsh, Chris Gladwin, and I co-founded P33, an initiative to build a thriving and inclusive tech-based economy for our region. I am very proud that P33 has been a strong catalyst in fostering better connections between Chicago stakeholders and the global tech community. P33 serves as a close partner of the Chicago Quantum Exchange and the Illinois Quantum Information Science Technology Center. Organizations like P33, IQUIST, and CQE make it easier for academia, industry, and startups to collaborate. Second, let me be clear. Without private investment, we will lose the quantum race. We need more early stage investment. We need an ecosystem to scale and support quantum information science startups. We are competing with California and Massachusetts with hundreds of millions of dollars of venture dollars being invested there. Right now, public beta databases show that of the approximately $1 billion in venture investment in quantum information science, in North America, Illinois can only claim $150,000 invested locally. Yes, you heard it right, only $150,000. This is a real problem. Without investment dollars, we will just be a research hub. Without investment, our talented people will go elsewhere. To win, we need to organize ourselves not just to have the best people and the best ideas, but to win, we have to attract deep tech investors. We can do this. Together with IQUIST and CQE, we will work to bring entrepreneurs to Illinois and to build a stronger, more dynamic, and more collaborative ecosystem for this talent. But we need your help to make sure we have the capital that's needed as well. As Secretary of Commerce, I've traveled the country and the world and have seen different approaches to innovation and economic development. I've seen what works and what doesn't work in terms of creating stronger innovation ecosystems. And let me tell you, Illinois has all the necessary ingredients and the right to win the global quantum race. There's a lot at stake. Winning at quantum means strength in national security and incredible economic and educational impact for all who live in the region. But let me be clear, we need to do a lot more if we are going to seize one of the greatest economic opportunities our state has seen. To compete on a global scale, we cannot be slow. We must seize this extraordinary opportunity to change our region's status as a leading technology center. Thank you again for having me here today and thank you for all the work that you are doing to seize this incredible opportunity, to leverage our powerful assets, to make Illinois the nation's leader in quantum computing. <laughs>
thank you so much for uh, giving this talk and for your time participating in this quantum summit.